we're gonna be doing only fans and guns the only two things I seem to know in this world so we're gonna be shooting uh, some perk bottles that looks sexy so sexy that do it for you mm-hmm yeah it's it for me too oh, oh, hey, Rifles, assault rifles, tactical rifles, bolt action rifles, whatever prefix you would like to put in front of the word rifle, we are going to be covering in this video. Of course, in regards to Call of Duty Zombies. Naturally, since we're clumping in so many different classes of weapons that are similar to each other but not identical, I mean, there's just going to be a lot of them. A lot. So this is going to be a lot more listy than the other history videos. We are, of course, going to be starting off with World of War Nocturne Toten and the infamous bolt-action rifle that can be purchased off the wall for a small cost of 200 points in the beginning of a game. You can buy it at any time during the game, but if you buy it past round two, you're probably not making a good financial decision. Every human being on Earth acknowledges that the Car 98K is a heaping pile of dog shit other than one particular person. I I love it. This is my baby. This is, I, I want, I, I want it inside of me. And hey, if you wanted to pay 1300 additional points for the same exact weapon with a scope on it, waltz your ass on upstairs and open up this really suspicious cabinet. Also, this gun is not to be confused with the, if not identical, nearly identical Arasaka on Shinonuma. While we're on the subject of shit bolt actions in World at War, how about the Springfield? It's somehow even worse and it's a two shot in round one. Can't write this shit. All of these guns are clearly unusable, so you then go to the one of three semi-autos you can buy off the wall that are very similar to each other. You have the M1 Garand, the Gewehr, which kind of looks like Jewer. That's how I used to pronounce it when I was an immature child. And the Carbine, all are great-ish options. I mean, World of War doesn't have many options, but I mean, you, you can just, they're, they're pretty good. For like round five and below. And also to round off World of War is the only Fully automatic assault rifle, the STG-44. Or should I say, the STD? <laughs> TBH, fellas, I actually didn't even know that this was an assault rifle until I started doing research for this video. I thought it was an SMG. I thought that for the longest time, my heart has been crushed. So if there is one takeaway from the rifles in World at War, it's nothing. There's not one noteworthy thing other than the fact that you should probably just not use them. <laughs> um, man. Really sad start to this video. Now, of course, you can pap them on Doris where there's actually a pap machine, but that doesn't really make you all that more compelled to use them. I would say it's Black Ops 1 where things become interesting because they're actually assault rifles that are, for the most part, fully automatic, whereas in World of War, they were all boring and slow. So the first one you'll notice right off the bat is, of course, the M14, the one you can buy in the spawn room for a low cost of 500, but unlike the Car 98K and unlike the disappointment of the past, the M14 is a reliable, consistent source of points on early rounds. It is far superior to the Olympia or any other starting weapon in pretty much any other game. I would not consider myself a gang member. I'm as white as a golf ball, but more importantly, there just really isn't even a debate between the M14 and the Olympia. So the fact that there are gangs <laughs> for each of those fucking starting guns, I think it's funny, but, you know, it, it is a little indicative of how the people's brains work in this community. Y'all know M14 be better than that two-shot piece of shit. M14 is the way to get them points. I mean, look at this. Are you fucking kidding me? 60 points! The M14 is a reliably great starting gun. End of discussion, and when you pack a punch it, it still kind of works pretty good. <laughs> I would honestly consider keeping this gun for the majority of pretty much any game it's on. Its accessibility made it popular and therefore a giant meme in the zombies community, one of the more renowned guns in the game's history. It was so popular that it made a return in Black Ops 2 and in Black Ops 3, and it got significantly better in BO3. I don't know why. I swear any gun from the past that gets plugged into Black Ops 3 instantly gets a whole lot better. But the M14 is not to be confused with the M16. They're nothing alike. You couldn't possibly mix them up with each other. The M16 is a three-round burst assault rifle. Now, a lot of people really, really dislike three-round burst weapons in real life and in video games. I'm not one of those people that hates it, but I definitely don't prefer it. I feel like if you prefer three-round burst, you also like getting pegged in the... Uh, that joke fell apart, as I was saying, and I felt bad saying it. No matter, though, because you can upgrade it and make it fully automatic, and it comes with a new tube attachment. So. You really can't go wrong with this gun. A lot of the Black Ops 1 upgrades are super creative. That's why I sort of illuminate them more than any other game. 
Upgrading guns in Black Ops 1 really did make a huge difference. Plus, look at that fucking name. Ugh! To say that the M16 was a popular boy would be an understatement. This gun returned in pretty much every single game afterwards. It kind of was underwhelming in BO2, but it got a little bit better in BO3. It was also in BO4. I don't want to talk about it. And of course, in Cold War. There's also the FAMAS, the FAMAS, however you want to pronounce it. This was a great gun in multiplayer, but that did not translate to zombies whatsoever. The FAMAS was kind of garbage in zombies, purely based on its rate of fire, which is its strength in multiplayer because you're able to kill enemies faster. But in the game of zombies, you got to have a lot of ammo in your reserve. And, you know, the FAMAS just does not have that. You fly through bullets with this thing. You kind of just steer clear of it. Yeah, but meet the FAMAS's cooler older brother, the Fafur. For real, though, the FFAR is so much better than the FAMAS that you probably wouldn't even be able to tell that they're the same gun. The F and Fail is uh, semi auto, it's very underwhelming in just about every way. Don't use it unless you are a depressed human being. <laughs> Also, hey, but when you upgrade it, it does become three-round burst, so that's a benefit. The fact that they thought this gun was adequate enough to bring back in the future is sadder than the fact that Bill Cosby just got released. And it becomes the epic win. Wow, that is just crushing. That is a spirit crusher. It did not deserve that name. And uh, while we're rounding off all of the assault rifles that are sus in Black Ops 1, we got the G11. This is fucking annoying. I don't know why you people are watching this shit anymore. BO1's gun variety is highly sus. I would say it's probably the worst overall, but these three assault rifles made up for all of the shit that came before it. I would consider these three the fan favorites in BO1 Zombies, and it's no coincidence that they have great damage output, have a ton of ammo, and are fully automatic. First up, we have the AUG, the AUG. I, I don't know which. There are two noteworthy things about this gun. Number one, it's actually got a master key attachment when you upgrade it, so it has a shotgun attachment to it. These BO1 upgrades were built different. Also, you can buy this gun off the wall on the Wii version in Kino. That in and of itself might be more impressive than the Cold War version of it. Let's also not forget the Galil, the Galil. It's a Russian assault rifle, if I'm not mistaken. I probably am mistaken. This is a fucking iconic gun if there ever was one. It's in Black Ops 1, it's in Black Ops 2, it's even in Black Ops 3. And in Black Ops 4. Wait, is it in BO5? I was about to say BO5. Cold War. Let me look at my notes here. It is not. Damn it. When upgraded, it becomes the Lamentation. This thing is just everything you would want in an assault rifle. And the final great AR in this game would be none other than the Commando. My personal favorite gun ever. Ever. Not just Call of Duty. Like, if I had to pick one gun to shoot in real life, it probably would be this one. Why I like it so much, honestly, it's just so smooth. It's silky smooth to the touch. It's got no recoil whatsoever. The reloading is smooth, especially with a dual mag when you upgrade it to the Predator, the Sexual Predator. Love that name. The Commando is just... Oh, oh my god, I don't have words for it. So as you can see, there is a big contrast between rifles in Black Ops and rifles in World at War. World at War, like I said in the beginning, was just full of crap, honestly. Uh, but hey, BO1 really stepped it up. Oh my god. There is a god after all, guys. We just got the freaking SMR after probably... A million and a half tries. This is a hard map for me, guys. I'm gonna be honest. And uh, not only is it like you know not an easy map, but um, you see this gun that I'm using right here? Not a very good gun. You know, you may have you may have heard of it before. Hey guys, Connor. So what we're we gonna be do, talking about? Why I hate this map? Play. One of the worst weapons into zombies. It's really drastic and it's really sad. Other than the embarrassingly and pathetically bad SMR, pretty much every AR in this game is actually great. There really isn't one in particular, like, other than the SMR, that is below average. They're all pretty solid. We'll start off with none other than the MTAR. I suppose if I had to attach one adjective to the MTAR, it would be solid, because it's a reliable source of everything. I would say the same thing applies to the Type 25, just to a slightly lesser extent. And, of course, since every single game needs an unbearable burst weapon, this game decided to throw in the M8A1. It's not bad by any means. In fact, it's going to get you the kills you probably need. But the thing is, it's burst. And I'm, I swear to God, the more and more time goes on in this video, the more and more I fucking hate burst weapons. Of course, a lot of the ARs from BO1 returned to BO2. So there's no surprise there. We already talked about some of these. But, you know, what doesn't get talked about enough, I don't think, 
is that a lot of the BO2 ARs are actually map exclusives. Yeah, the M27 on Nuketown only. This was a lot like the Commando. Next to zero recoil, really smooth, does pretty much everything well. There's also the AK-47 on Mob of the Dead. The one map we didn't get Mule Kick on, there were, I swear, purposefully <laughs> way more and way better guns. Oh, and my STD makes a return. Go figure. And the Scar H, both of them exclusive to Origins. Both really, really sound, just all around really good ARs. I think we can all appreciate that. Oh, and let's not forget about the AN-94. Possibly the best, the most popular assault rifle in the game's history. I, I really do think that. It was introduced on Die Rise, unfortunately, but, you know, I made an appearance on Buried afterwards. The AN-94 is so good that it's kind of a no-brainer. Like, it, it's a wall gun. It's only like 1,200 points to buy this gun, so it, 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 you are getting the best return of all time by picking this gun. Really do it. We kind of breeze through BO2, but to be honest, there isn't even much to be said. When you have so many ARs that are all great, all fully automatic, good damage output, good reload speed, etc., you really don't have much to talk about. <laughs> So, I mean, that's a good thing, though. And the same exact thing applies to BO3. There isn't a bad AR in this game. There just isn't. You could argue the Shiva's bad, but it's a starting gun for 500 points. It's nobody's first choice, but relative to its cost, you're not getting a bad deal with the Shiva or really any gun in this game. There is a lot going on with ARs in BO3. Some of them are DLC guns. Some of them are map exclusive. Some of them are in the box. Some of them are on the wall. Some of them are on both. There's a lot of different ways you can go about rifles in Black Ops 3. And the way I typically go, my favorite, I grab it right off the wall. It's cheap. It's effective. The KN44. It's like a slightly lesser version of the AK-47. Not only does it not have a flaw, it's on the wall so you can constantly buy ammo for it so you can keep this gun for the entirety of the game. While the KN is decent at everything, there are some guns that are a little bit better at some things than others. For example, the Man of War is a little bit better for damage output. With the ICR, you get literally zero recoil. The HVK, I think, at least based on the eye test, has a slightly faster rate of fire than a lot of the ARs, and there's also the burst option for you if you happen to be into that sort of thing. There is the M8A7 available for you, which is not a bad gun. It's, it's got some pretty good damage output. They're all solid, and they're super accessible. They're on the wall for the most part. One thing to note about BO3's guns as a collective whole is that they are all usable. They are all viable in one way or another, one strategy or another, mainly because of Gobblegum and Double Pap, but still, I mean, there is not really an outlier. There is not a bad gun in this game. And really, this could just be me. I feel like this was the first COD Zombies game to really experiment with ARs on the wall, consistently at least. Of course, there are some in the past, but they were mostly shit. I feel like mostly SMGs and shotguns were put on the wall in the past, but this game really started to take ARs seriously. Not to mention there were a lot of fucking cool DLC guns. The M1 Garand decided to be a lot cooler and become the MX Garand. What's unfortunate is you can't fucking reload this gun unless you shoot every single bullet out of the mag. It's frustrating, but I, I love this gun for whatever reason. It just keeps bringing me back in. Uh, it's also the Peacekeeper Mark II. This was something we saw in BO2. Oh, and of course, the STD is back. It's always It always comes back. It's the gift that keeps on giving. You know, it's been a while since we talked about World of War rifles. They were horrendous, but we've come a long way. We truly have. Wow. I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault! Welcome to Black Ops 4, Chads. If you were planning on taking copious amounts of drugs to put yourself to sleep and never wake back up again because we've reached this part of the video, I don't blame you. I'm not even a big BO4 hater. Yeah, I've talked shit about the game, but the guns in particular could not be more bland. They're futuristic guns. It's a futuristic COD. These guns don't seem to have much personality to them. This is the first Call of Duty Zombies game that decided to distinguish tactical rifles from assault rifles. Whereas in the past, they would sort of blur the lines. What is a tactical There's no such thing as a tactical rifle? Tactics is not an item. Okay, so what it's basically trying to tell me is that it's any rifle that is not a fully automatic one. So that's easy. Let's go with that. That would include the Swordfish, a burst tactical rifle. That would include the Essex Model 07. Let's not talk about that. The ABR and the Auger. Both phenomenal weapons in terms of damage, but they're generally more sluggish and, you know, just not very fun to use. But if you're anything like this guy, you're probably using tactical rifles on the regular. Some of the base ARs in this game consist of the ICR, made a return, but slightly different than its previous form. The Maddox, why is it called? Why are the why are any of these names what they are? The KN57, eerily similar to the AK. 
Also, the Hitchcock, the Rampart 17, and the Vapor XKG. All very exhilarating. Now, but on a serious note, they are good statistically for the most part. They're fine. They're, they're going to get you the kills you need in this game, but they're just a little underwhelming. And I think it's in large part because of the upgrading process. It used to be in Black Ops 1 especially that you would get some sort of unique attachment or something cool that would make the gun stand out. Maybe the name was cool. You know, maybe it was exclusive to a map. There was something that kind of made it unique, but in this game, they, I mean, really none of that is applicable. There were a ton of DLC guns in BO4. It was just absurd. Uh, to name a few, we have, of course, the SWAT Rift, we have the Peacekeeper returning from BO2, the Stingray, the Echo Hawk Dual Boar. Yeah, that's the actual name of it. Based purely on performance, I do not have any complaints with these guns. It's just the lack of, you know, what's the word? Creativity? What's your favorite idea? Mine is being creative. How do you get the idea? I just tried to think creatively. It's probably not a good thing that the most interesting assault rifle in this game is the AN-94. The ARs in Cold War hit a little bit closer to home. They're a little less dreadful. There were, of course, some returning ones like the M16, the FFAR, the AUG. The AK even returns. The XM4 is pretty much a commando reskin. The DMR, Krig, QBZ. Actually, that one's not that great. Type 63, there are a ton of high quality. They're constantly coming out with new ones, for example, the Carve 2, the Grova, Fair 83, C58. I don't have gameplay for any of those because those are DLC guns and they're still coming out with them. So there's probably going to be even more releasing after this video even comes out. So that feels a little futile to talk about that. I mean, to be fair, I, now that I'm thinking about it a lot more, I think Cold War's gun variety isn't too much more exciting than BO4's, but they're definitely better statistically, especially with the new upgrading system. There are a lot of ARs in this game, it's just a very new game, so we're still getting acquainted with them. The rest of them have longevity and time on their side. For better or worse, you decide. That's the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Check out all of the links in the description. Let me know which episode you would like to see next, which class of weapons or whatever relating to Call of Duty Zombies. And with that, hope you have a phenomenal day. Make sure to do a good deed, even if it's not good in everyone's eyes. Goodbye. <laughs>